So, welcome to SAP TechEd and uh, our session today about the SAP solution for identity and access management and how using this solution we establish the basis for the intelligent enterprise. The disclaimer about the information that we are going to share today. First, we will start with a short introduction of the lecture today and after that we will go through our main topics, identity provisioning and identity authentication. At the end, we'll have a slot for demo and Q&A. As part of the introduction, first, maybe we have to go some years back and to see what was the situation maybe 10 years ago. So at this point of time, most of the customers, uh, they were in the corporate network. Everybody with the on-premise solutions, with the on-premise application servers, and all the employees in this corporate network behind the firewalls. With this, at this point, all the solutions for identity and access management, IDMs, single sign-on solutions and identity management, all, all this was in the corporate network. But now, what we have, we have all these cloud applications in the recent years. You can see that the SAP portfolio start growing more and more in the cloud, providing more solutions there with a more agile way of development. And with this, more and more use cases are coming. And not only use cases but and uh, business uh, applications, but also a different type of users that are not anymore part of the corporate network. So we have employees outside the network. We have also uh, partners outside the network and some customers. And in order to establish the connection between the existing on-premise world and to allow our customers just not only to build a brand new world in the cloud, but to extend the existing landscape, we provide our two cloud services, identity authentication and identity provisioning service. From one side, identity authentication takes care for single sign-on, authentication and access for the applications in the cloud. But in order to do this, we need for most of the applications to have the users there. And for this, identity provisioning service is coming on stage. So identity provisioning service can distribute the user data, uh, user accounts, and uh, user groups across the applications. And with this, to enable the access. But it's not only this. We have also an option to integrate this on-premise world. So you're not uh, forced to migrate everything, but you can just extend your existing solutions, your existing applications with the cloud uh, applications that we have. And how this happens? If we see, we have the SAP Cloud Platform, and these two services are part of the portfolio of the platform. And from one side, we have we have existing user stores, and it could be an on-premise HR system, it could be Active Directory, where all the users are already there. And using the provisioning service, we can easily get the needed user accounts with the user details and to distribute them in the applications in the cloud. And not only the user identities, but also the authorizations. So the users can access everything that is needed with the proper authorizations. And in order to do this, here, Identity Authentication Service, as I mentioned, is taking care about the authentication, the single sign-on. And of course, we can integrate with the existing solution for the corporate identity provider. And with this, we can easily delegate the authentication or reuse existing user store in order to build on the top of the existing applications, existing uh, single sign-on setup extension in the cloud. And now let's see more about the provisioning service because with the provisioning we establish the, and prepare the stage. So the provisioning service, as I mentioned, is taking care about the uh, distribution of user accounts across the systems. And with this, 
we can cover the whole user and uh, user flow. So from hiring the employee, if the employee change uh, the position or uh, is promoted, we can change the authorizations. And of course, at the end, if the user leaves the company or uh, is retiring, we can remove the users and the authorizations uh, from the systems. So with this, we can cover the employee end-to-end -end flow. So the users are really able from the first day to the last day to access everything that is needed in the company. And how and why we are doing this? So you can see in the landscape, we have really various applications. From one side, we have the source applications, which could be an Active Directory, ABAP system, can be an existing IODAP or third-party IDM solution from one side. From other side, we have all these SAP applications in the cloud that needs to be integrated somehow with the existing environment. And of course, we have also third-party applications that sometimes need integrated. And here we position Identity Provisioning Service as a central hub of integration of all the SAP applications in the cloud when we are talking about users and taxes provisioning. And why and how we do this? Why? Because in this way we have really a central place where this user and taxes uh, can be controlled in easy manner. And from one side, it's a central place, but from other side, it can hide the complexity behind all these systems. Because you can see these systems that some of them, they are developed by the SAP. Some of them, uh, they are part of the companies that were acquired uh, during the years. So you can imagine most of them, they have different APIs. They have uh, some specifics, even they're using a standards. Most of them, they have really specifics. They have different authentication and authorization uh, approach. Everything that is behind these systems and the user management of them is somehow handled by the identity provisioning service, and you don't see this because we have a branded connectors that are delivered especially for the particular application. And in this case, you can easily integrate the application without knowing the details about the API. So we have a central place that we can integrate the cloud world. We have a way to integrate the on-premise world easily and to basically build on top the functionality. And we have a complexity that is hidden behind our connectors. And it's not only the complexity that is handled, but you know most of the systems, they have a different user model. So the user representation is different. And that's why we have a so-called transformation engine in the provisioning service that can easily transform the data model from one type to another and to transfer the attributes in a proper way. So this is the first thing that our transformation engine can do. The second thing is we can easily apply some conditions. And based on these conditions, we can have uh, based on values in different attributes to filter some users or to provide a different values for some of the other attributes. For example, we can easily get uh, an attribute from the HR system. We'll see it later in the demo. Uh, we will see uh, how, based on one attribute, we can, for example, assign a specific user group in identity authentication service. So all this we can do with this transformation in identity provisioning service. And if we continue, we can see the on-premise world that we're talking about. So till now, the SAP solution was identity management, SAP identity management in the on-premise world where we 
had exactly this solution to distribute users and tutorization across the systems. And th this is something that is widely used in most of the big company. And now the challenge is, okay, we have everything set up in the on-premise world and we have to integrate the cloud world. And here we have the connectivity that is provided by the IDM solution and the provisioning service in the platform. And based on this connectivity, based on the scheme standard, we can easily integrate our cloud applications. Without touching our existing solution, we can easily build on top the extension and to use all the functionality and flows that we have already established in the on-premise and to have this connectivity to, to the cloud and to have all the user and access management that is needed. But if we have even more complex scenario where SAP access control is also on the picture in order to handle the business role management, we can have also a cloud service corresponding to this one in the on-premise. And this is SAP Access Governance Solution provided again in the cloud portfolio of SAP. We're not talking today about this product in details, but this is how we can extend the existing solution if we have it in the on-premise world. So we can cover also this scenario. And here we are talking the SAP solutions in the on-premise, but basically, as I mentioned, identity provisioning service is based on the scheme standard. So if you have third-party solution, you can again easily integrate it with provisioning service and after that use all the connectivity that you have provided by the various connectors. And with this, we are ready with the stage. So the users are distributed, all the authorizations are provided uh, on the systems. And now the user should access the applications. And here we have identity authentication service. So as I mentioned, different type of users, various applications in the cloud. And here again, we have a central service offered as part of the SAP RM portfolio for exactly this purpose. So with identity authentication service, we can allow different type of users to authenticate and to access all these applications using different protocols. So it could be a SAML, it could be OpenID Connect. So you can use these two protocols to connect the existing SAP solutions, but also a third party solutions that are covering the protocols. And as this is not enough, we need to integrate the existing environment. And here we have different ways to do this. The first one is to integrate the corporate user store. So it could be an ABAP, it could be Active Directory. And this is basically, let's say, attached user store where we connect via secure tunnel in order to use the existing credentials of the users. But this is the first type. The second type is so-called SAML proxy delegation, where we can, using the SAML protocol, to delegate the single sign-on and the authentication to the existing corporate identity provider. It could be an SAP one, it could be a third-party one. With this, we have, for different users, a way to access our systems. And later we will see why we are talking about the different users uh, when, if they are accessing one of the same applications. But first, let's see how this integration can happen in more details, because it's important. As I mentioned, maybe the widely used approach is to use SAML proxy, so the delegated authentication, when identity authentication service receives the authentication request, and when the user tries to access the application, and delegate the authentication to the corporate user store. And there we can reuse the single sign-on approach that you already have. So it could be a certificate, it could be, it could be token, whatever you have. And after that, identity authentication service can serve as a 
co-out single sign-on solution and to do not delegate the further requests so to the existing network. But with this, we are reusing what we have from the user store of this identity provider. The federation option here is allowing us not only to use these attributes, but also to enrich them with some attributes that are coming from the identity authentication service. And here we see how we can get some attributes using the provisioning service in identity authentication service. Having these attributes after that to merge them, even to filter some of them, and to send them to the application. Which is how we enrich and add value on the existing, on the top of the existing solutions. Also, we have a conditional authentication. So, if on the landscape there are more than one identity providers, for example, after some acquisitions or different uh, subsidiaries are using the applications, we have a so-called conditional application. So, when the user access the application and the application redirects the user to identity authentication service based on different rules that can be defined. The identity authentication service can delegate the authentication to a different identity provider. For example, if the user that is coming with uh, email from the corporate domain of company A can be redirected to the identity provider of company A. If it's coming with domain of company B, it will be redirected to company B. It could be based on the IP range, it could be based on a user group. So, in this way, the applications can use more than one identity providers easily. And this is the so-called SP initiated, when the service provider, the application, starts the authentication flow. There is also an option to use the other flow, which is so-called IDP initiated, where the user gets a special link that points to the corporate identity provider, and after the authentication there, it's redirected to the application. So we have this also, having CAS again in the middle as a central point of integration. The users can go through these links. Identity authentication service can verify that the users are coming from the proper identity provider, not from the other, so from the expected one, and to allow user to access the application. And not only this, we can apply, for example, a two-factor authentication if it's needed, but we'll see in addition later. The approach that I mentioned at the beginning, when we can integrate the existing identity provider. So, in some companies we have maybe more restrictions, so the identity provider is not exposed to Internet Zone. So, in this case, what we can do, we can use a cloud connector service provided again by the SAP Cloud Platform to use this service to establish a secure tunnel to the on-premise world, crossing the firewalls without opening any ports, using a cloud connector client installed on the on-premise world, we build this tunnel and we can validate the user credentials. So, imagine you're outside the network, but you want to have access to the applications or some of the applications. You can go to the application, you see identity authentication service, login screen, you can put your domain credentials that are in the Active Directory, for example, these credentials will be validated through this tunnel. And if they are valid, you will be allowed to access the applications without need of user provisioning even, without copying the password in the cloud. So the password and the identity remains in the on-premise part. So this can be combined also with uh, Kerberos authentication or SPNE Go. So with this, what we can provide is an option if the end user is in the corporate 
domain in the corporate network. Having the token to access the application even without any login screen. So we are able to validate the token in identity authentication service and to allow users to access the applications with invisible single sign-on. And if we combine this feature with the previous one, that is the cloud connector, what we can achieve without exposing an identity provider outside the network, we can access the applications inside the corporate network without any login screens. And when we are outside, we can reuse the, our credentials from the domain network and again to access the applications. On top of this, we can have a risk-based authentication. And here you can see from one side we have this username and password authentication options in identity authentication service that can serve, of course, as an identity provider standalone one. We can delegate the authentication to a corporate identity provider. We can integrate a social identity provider. But also we can use this uh, Kerberos authentication and corporate user store. On top of all this, we provide an option for two-factor authentication. And here, let's see more details about this. We have three options for two-factor authentication. So as part of the risk-based authentication uh, solution in identity authentication service, we can define a different rules. And when we have a need, we can use some of these options. So from one side, we have an option to use a one-time passcode generated by an application, most probably a mobile application that is registered in RS. From other side, we can use an SMS code that is received when the user tries to log in an application that requires a second factor. And also, we can integrate a radio server. But let's see how this can work and how this risk-based authentication can be configured. So we can have a different rules based on different conditions. For example, based on the IP ranges, based on user groups, based on user types even. So you can see with different options, we can define rules when the access to a particular application to be allowed when two-factor to be requested, and when the access to be denied. So for example, if I'm an employee, I can easily access the applications. But if I'm, for example, in particular uh, range zone, or if I'm an admin, I have to use a two-factor of authentication. But we'll see more details later as part of the demo. More about the security features that we have in identity authentication services. For some applications, we can allow self-registration. So for some use cases, for example, employees, partners, we can have a provisioning. But for some use cases, when uh, consumers can access our applications and we want to allow them to self-register, we have this option in IS. But in order to protect against bots and spam, what we can do, we, we have basically integration of, with Google Recapture. And also, we can configure a phone verification. So when the user tries to uh, register, he has to provide a phone. It should be a unique phone on the system. So one user can register just one account. And after that, we will send a token to this account in order to validate that this phone number belongs to the user. So with this, let's see, we have covered the security features. Yeah? Uh, to Yes, maybe we can see the demo. And after that, if you have more questions, we can continue. Uh, so this was from the security aspects. Uh, and let's see about the 
more usability features because identity authentication service is something that uh, is seen by the end user. So from one side, we have these end user forms, login forms, self-registration forms, uh, forms for accept terms of use, privacy policies, and so on. All these screens, they are responsive screens, so they can fit on a mobile device or on a computer easily. And also, they can be branded based on the company standards. So we can have changed the texts, the logos, and stuff like this. But now we already have a full customization option with a custom CSS file. So with this, we can fully rebrand the login form in order to fit to the corporate look and feel. OK. It will be hard with this one, so I'll continue. Also, we have a so-called UI with an overlay uh, where we can place when the user uh, application has some public page and that can be accessed. And after that, when the user tries to navigate to some protected resource or page, we can request the authentication not on a full screen, as we saw on the previous screen, but also in an iframe. So the user do not lose the context of the application. It's not redirected. Just see the login form on the top. And this is basically the content. I'll try to cover it almost everything in the demo. And first, let me see the scenario that we will have as part of the demo. So these are the systems. From one side, we have Azure AD as a corporate identity provider that will integrate. Using identity authentication and provisioning service, we will integrate the applications provided by SAP in the cloud. From one side, we'll have a launchpad applications that will have con connections to all the other applications. And I have divided the applications in two groups. The first group is for that will be accessed by all the users. And the second group will be available only for our sales persons. For this, we'll have two users, one corporate users from sales department and one external users. These two users will start from success factor system. So as an HR, we have defined this as a source of our uh, users. And we will provision the external user to identity authentication service, where we will set an initial password in order to be able to access the application and to replicate the user in the applications that have to be available for this user. So SAP Jam and SAP Conquer. For the employee, we will have similar provisioning through identity provisioning service to identity authentication service. But here, we will have also a replication to Microsoft Azure. And of course, to all the cloud applications. So that will be available for this user also as a salesperson. You can see we can easily integrate applications like marketing cloud, analytics cloud, uh, cloud for customer, IBP, and so on. Everything provided by the provisioning service using uh, our connectors. So with this, what we will have after that, we will have authentication of the external user in identity authentication service with options to access the launchpad applications and all the applications that should be available for this user. What we will have for the corporate user, based on the conditional authentication rule that we will have, this user will be delegated for authentication to our Azure Active Directory. And of course, we will be able to access, again, the Fiori launchpad portal and all the applications in the cloud. So this is the scenario. Let's see how we're going to do this. This is the administration console of identity authentication service. And 
here you can control all the uh, user management, the integrated applications, and the integrated identity providers. For example, here we have a corporate identity provider already registered. This is our Azure AD. Here you can easily integrate the Azure AD just with a few clicks, uh, setting the type and importing the SAML metadata in order to set up the SAML trust. And after that, here in Federation, we can see more about these options to enrich the user attributes that are coming from the SAP applications. So here the first option is to integrate with uh, Identity Authentication Store. So with this, we will allow exactly the AS user attributes to be used only uh, also in the assertion. With the second option, we can add an additional protection. So only users that are available in Identity Authentication Service, so only these users can access the applications and can authenticate. And the third one allows us to use our application configurations in identity authentication service when we are talking about risk-based authentication, when we are talking about uh, terms of use, privacy policy documents. So we can do this on top of the delegated authentication. And all this can be easily integrated with our cloud applications. Here you can see the list of the applications that were on the slide. For example, the source system, the SAP success factors. You can see here we have uh, various options again to configure the SAML trust, but for most of you, this will come pre integrated when you get this new solution. But here is uh, the interesting part the conditional authentication. Here you can see we have a defined, already defined rule that say if the user is coming from the corporate domain, so the email is with this. Uh, corporate domain in Azure, this user have to authenticate in Azure AD. All the other users will authenticate in Identity Authentication Service. And this can be extended easily with one or more rules for different identity providers. But with this configuration, we will achieve that external users will authenticate in Identity Authentication Service and employees will authenticate in the Azure AD. All these configurations are already prepared. So for all the applications, we have this conditional authentication configured. And also what is interesting here, so you can see that here the subject name is login name. So success factors require the user login name as user identifier. SAP Conquer, for example, require the email. So this is how identity authentication service can serve as a hub and to use a different attributes as identifiers to the various systems. For example, here we have an analytics cloud. And here is something interesting. Here we can have not only the standard user attributes, like user ID, email, and uh, login name, but we can define a custom attribute. So this custom attribute will be provisioned from the success factor system and will be internal identifier of success factors. And this internal identifier will be used as an identifier between identity authentication service and SAP Analytics Cloud. And why we do this? Because after that, we want to allow this analytics to be embedded in success factors and to have system-to-system -system communication and when you access success factors, to be able easily to reuse the functionality provided the analytic, by the analytics component. So all these part of the intelligent enterprise uh, strategy. And something here that I want to also mention is this application. It's an application ring on the Cloud Platform, Cloud Foundry. It's an application that use OpenID Connect for integration and for authentication. So here we have, let's say, a protocol conversion. We have an identity provider that is using SAML for the integration with AIS. And after that, between AIS and the application, we are using OpenID. 
And also what we have here in user attributes, we have some standard user attributes that will be sent from identity authentication service, but we also have uh, groups. So our sales person will be assigned automatically during the, during the user provisioning to this sales group in identity authentication service, and after that, this will be sent to the application, and we will see it. And not only this, we can, as I mentioned, we can combine this with the attributes that are coming from the Azure, from the corporate identity provider. So here you can see we will get a groups that are coming from Azure and another user attribute department, and we will merge the groups, we will add the department, and we will send this information to the application. I think all the other applications are pretty much with similar configurations. What I want to do also is to configure a risk-based authentication in order to demonstrate how two-factor can be used. For this, I will use a Conquer, which will be an application available for both type of users. So here, if we go to risk-based authentication, we can define a rule. And this rule, you can see we have uh, different options to define the rule. So I will use a cloud group. And as I mentioned, our employee will be assigned to a sales group. That's why I will use this group. And we will change the action. So I don't want just to allow the access, but I want to use a two-factor with SMS. And I save the configuration. All the other users will be allowed to access without any two-factor authentication. And with this, we have established the sum of trust. We have established the authentication. Now let's see more about the usability that I uh, show you. And let me just quickly go and show you how a custom screen can look like, for example. And uh, here, I have one application connected to this best run uh, RS. This is a public page of the application. And here we have two type of user authentication that we can do. We can do a full screen in order to see how our full screen can look like. So this is the standard full screen form, which is, as I mentioned, responsive. So it can easily fit to a, a mobile device. And if I go back, what we have also, we have an uh, overlay login. Here you can see the background remains the same, and we just have this overlay login for better user experience. And about the custom CSS, let's see how our launchpad looks like when we try to log in. So this is the standard full screen login page. And now I will go to my Launchpad application here. Branding and layout, branding style. And here I have this default one. I can customize some colors, but I can use also a custom CSS file that is supported. So with this, I can use my already uploaded CSS file. And now let's see how this will look like. I open another window just to be able to compare it and to use again the same launchpad application. And this is it. So this is how you can customize based on your requirements the end user login screens. Okay, this is from the authentication part and let's see now the provisioning. So this is identity provisioning service administration console, where you can define the source system of the users. So here we have our success factor system. And you can define the target system where our users will be provisioned. As part of the source system, we have a standard properties that basically establish the connections like URL users for authentication and so on. But I will also show you two properties. The first one is 
the user attributes that we can specify, for example, and to get not the whole user that is in the HR system with the, all the attributes, but just the attributes that we need. And here, for example, what we can see, we will get the business phone. After that, based on this business phone, we will use this two-factor authentication with SMS. Also, for demo purposes, we will provision only two users. So we can make a server-side filtering. For the demo purposes, it's using the list of usernames, but it could be based on uh, other filtering that is uh, provided by the Success Factors API. So this is how identity provisioning service can easily allow you to use the functionality provided by the SAP applications. And after that, the target systems. You can see all the target systems, identity authentication service, Azure for our MPUE, Analytics Cloud, C4C, Conquer, IBP, and JAM, and Marketing Cloud. And here, for example, let's see Azure. I want to show you the transformation because I mentioned that we have a transformation engine. We can easily filter the users. And this is how, for example, for our demo purposes, we will provision to Azure not both users, but only the users, the user that is with the corporate email. So this is for an example how you can define a condition and based on this condition to have a different behavior of the user provisioning. And I think this is pretty much the setup in identity provisioning service, straightforward. Here in identity authentication service, we have 31 users, you can see. And now I'm going to trigger the provisioning. So the provisioning can be triggered manually, as I do it right now, but it can be scheduled and it can run automatically on a, some defined period of time. And now, if we go here, we have also a box where we can monitor the user synchronization. You can see now we have this uh, running job. And after the users are extracted from the source system, we can get the statistics. And here we have the status is success. We have two users extracted from the source system. And we can see we have users created. In some of the systems, there are two. In some of the systems, we have just one user replicated. And this is exactly because we want to provide only for our MPUI access to all the systems. And for all the other system, the external user is skipped. If you go to Identity Authentication Service now and just refresh, now we have 33 users. And if we go to our user that is from the corporate domain, we can see different things. First, the phone number, which is my phone number. And after that, I'll get the token for two-factor. And also, we have automatically assigned user group. And this is the administration part. Let's now see how the authentication will look like for the end user. I'm accessing the launch path, and I see this login form. I'll use the external user, and Iniesta. Based on the domain, I stay in identity authentication service for authentication. Here I mentioned that I will have an initial password. And during the first login, I'm forced to change this initial password. So you can see from the first day, I can access the applications. I, can, I have the proper authorizations on, uh, across the systems. Here, I have single sign-on with of course, success factor system. So 
I'm not going to Azure anymore. So the session now is handled by Identity Authentication Service. So I'm authenticated easily here. Also, if I go to Conquer, you can see the IIS login screen for a second. And after that, I'm redirected and I'm authenticated also here. Jam and also, let's see this OpenID Connect application. You can see here, I have first name, last name, user ID, and I don't have groups, for example, assigned in identity authentication service, and I don't have corporate attributes. Oh, well, this is great, but let's see how the employee will be able to authenticate. Again, the same application, again, the same screen. So using the conditional authentication rule based on our email domain, we will be redirected to Azure. You can see even our email is prefilled, so we don't need to type it again. And uh, here. After my authentication in Azure, I'm again redirected through Identity Authentication Service to the Launchpad. And here, based on my uh, groups, I can access more applications. So I see more tiles. So from one side, my, users, my user is created in these systems. But also, in the Launchpad, I can see these tiles based on the sales group. And here again, I can access our success factor system uh, with single sign-on. And all the other applications like Marketing Cloud, all these applications are integrated and I can access them from the very first time of my employment. Maybe it's not necessary to go through all of them, but you can see how easily we can have uh, this single sign-on across the different systems. And here is the special attribute that I mentioned. Here we are using this attribute, for example, as user identifier, not our username or email. Uh, but the most important thing is that in all the systems, we are recognized. And let's see when I go to the OpenID Connect application. Here, from one side, we are authenticated, as I mentioned, converting the SAMO to OpenID. And also, we have these groups. You can see from one side the sales group that is coming from Identity Authentication Service and the Azure user group that is coming from Azure AD. Also, here you can see the corporate attribute department of the user that is coming from the success factors to Azure. And after that, via the assertion, we get it in the application. And when we try to access Conquer, let's see what will happen. We are authenticated, but we have to provide two-factor authentication because we have defined the rule that employees with corporate domain should use it. And I just get the token. Once the token is provided, I can access the application. So this is how we can build on top of the existing delegated authentication, or is based authentications and strong authentication using two-factor. So this is for the end user, how we can access from one the same URL, one the same applications. We can have access by different user types different authentications. And uh, as I mentioned before, why this is part of the intelligent enterprise. So here, if I go to, again, to success factors, we have to integrate the different applications. And intelligent enterprise relies exactly on these user flows that can guide you through one another third system. Just a second. Uh, 
just a second. Let's let's finish the presentation and awesome. So we have this system, and here we will see, for example, part of the reporting, how we can get integration of our analytics component. So here, for example. If I want to make a new story, I'll see here embedded SAP Analytics Cloud. So this is the SAP Analytics system embedded, and I can work on behalf of my user there. And this is why we say the identity and tax management in the cloud across the SAP systems is building the basis and the foundation for the intelligent enterprise because in this way we can allow our systems to work as one system and basically this is pretty much the demo part so i want to encourage you to continue your warning with our different sessions on the ticket to participate in our communities and also to access the other lectures and uh, works uh, that we have on the uh, ticket. These are the uh, sessions that we have for identity and tax management. And now I think we have around six minutes for Q&A. <laughs> uh, I have a question regarding the uh, identity and provision service. Yeah. So um, I saw that uh, we have the possibility to use transformation. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, what happens when I have a user who has like group A and B and active directory and then loses one of the groups and this shouldn't be reflected to the target system? Do we have any kind of delta mechanism in it who uh, gives you the information about who lost the last group? Because when I see these jobs, they don't have memory, right? Yeah. So. Currently, what we have in our product is exactly getting the user. Oh. <laughs> so it, it will be hard. It's about the user uh, provisioning and how we can uh, make this conversion and this uh, user attribute mapping, let's say. Uh, Currently, in identity provisioning service, we don't store the user. Yeah. And what we can do is, based on the user attributes that we read, on runtime to process the user, based on the current information, we can do all, everything to transform the user, but only based on this information. So we cannot collect. But we are also building another service, Active Directory, uh, which is not Active Directory, sorry, uh, Identity Directory service, which will allow us exactly to have a merged scenarios. And you can get this service, and basically Identity Provisioning Service can reuse it in order to merge and, in this case, to transform the data based on the information that is coming from more parties. I'm just wondering to which extent the solution is uh, able to extract custom attributes. You showed that at some point. Yeah. Let's say, for example, uh, a custom info type from HR system, and to deal with that. So first of all, um, including that custom info type and all the values for that yeah. into a rule. Yeah. But yeah. at some point, you show also showed user details. I saw a tab over there, and uh, how it's possible to have that information also included in the UI on the screen. You mean in the identity authentication service? Exactly. Yeah. Yes. So currently, uh, we are provisioning just a small set of user attributes as part of the demo. But the most important part was exactly that we are showing how we can get a particular attribute, for example, the phone. We can put it in identity authentication service. We can, after that, reuse it. 
we can get uh, information coming from the department, we can replicate this in a Azure AD. So everything that is available as a user attributes in identity authentication service can be controlled by provisioning service. So you can replicate the user data. And of course, you can use the identity authentication service custom attributes in order to put additional attributes if they're not available as part of the default uh, user type. OK, what would you recommend if we would like to have also a workflow on the cloud identity provisioning, like we would have in the old days on the identity management on-premise solution, a workflow to, to have validations before actual uh, user rights are granted? If you want to define such, and if you have uh, already established mechanism to define these flaws, you can use identity provisioning service. As I mentioned, we have a scheme API exposed and using this scheme API you can after that trigger the user provisioning so it depends on what is your current solution and how it's working or how you want to build it but basically this can be integrated with let's say other IDM solution and as part of this you can integrate your solution with this scheme API and to reuse after that the connectivity provided by the provisioning service. from it. So benefit from the analytics, but yeah. use the authentication through that I gateway. think even we cover this part because part of the target systems, we have Azure AD, which is basically a third part non-SAP system, which is coming with a, a scheme API. Based on the scheme API, we provision the user there, or we can read the user. So you can define Azure as a source. And of course, after that, using SAMO or OpenID Connect, we can integrate as part of the authentication. So yes, uh, after the session, I will be outside. If you have more questions, you can, uh, we can continue there. Or you can come, uh, I think, uh, on session 362, where we'll make uh, hands-on exactly on such a scenario where we integrate our systems using identity authentication and provisioning service, very similar to this one. So if you want to touch this solution, you're welcome to come on our session. Thank you very much for your participation.